Hello, hello, and welcome to this Friday for more cartoon drawing. I'm cartoonist Dan Letha for the Ministry Reasons for Hope. And today we're going to be drawing some uh, animals I haven't approached yet. Um, there's a category <clears throat> of creatures called living fossils. And uh, they're, they're a fascinating study all by themselves. If you've ever been into, uh, you know, animals that have supposedly lived millions of years ago. Um, I say supposedly because I don't believe they did. But um, there, are, there are animals that we find in the fossil record that, that evolutionists will say they've been extinct for millions and millions of years. And then um, surprisingly, we find some living, which is really funny. So either that's the case or they say that they're related to animals that have been, you know, dead for millions of years. So there's there's always some like, I don't know, connection. It's more of a spin, I think. But anyway, they're, they're fun to think about. And um, from a biblical point of view, of course, they haven't been dead for millions of years. Um, the earth isn't that old. So... But there are a couple that I picked. I was watching a video on, uh, on suppose, well, this one was uh, titled something about living fossils. And so I thought, hey, that's, a, that's kind of a cool topic. I'll, uh, I'll pick a couple of those. These particular animals are <clears throat> a bit more detailed. And so uh, I'm gonna take a bit more time on them because of all the details. And, but first, before we get into that, I wanted to show you something. I'll do a little show and tell. Something that I produced this week that uh, that made it into a national, um, I don't know if it's, it's not a TV program, but it's uh, a national vlog, blog, uh, podcast, I guess more of a podcast. Um, Steve Dace is a, uh, a nationally known uh, radio talk show host type of guy, and uh, those are two of his cohorts with him. So <clears throat> I did this artwork as, as a thank you to Steve Dace and his guys uh, for the support that they've uh, shown our, our ministry, Reasons for Hope, over the years. And um, Carl Kirby was interviewed by Steve Dace just yesterday, and so um, I had prepared this artwork for, for Carl to show to Steve. And so this uh, this actually showed up on the on the radio program. So if you want to check it out, just uh, type in Steve Dace D E A C E on YouTube and look for yesterday June twenty fourth's program. It says guest Carl Kirby on it, and then right at the end section, say about the last ten minutes or so, that's where you'll find the artwork. So I just wanted to kind of show that off. I, I liked it. it. I think it turned out really well. It was a lot of fun to do. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that that's a bit inspirational for you guys too. So, all right, so let's get going on, um, on these creatures. Now, the photos that I'm using for these things is uh, they're, <clears throat> they're copyrighted. And so I can't show the photos on my, on my broadcast here, but I can use them for reference and then draw them. And the first creature is uh, is something that um, kind of gives me the willies a little bit. I mean, they're really cool, and uh, there's there's a, a form of them that live around here. In fact, they live a, a, in a lot of places. Um, so maybe you can kind of guess as to what this particular creature is. You'll probably guess at least the general category with uh within a, a little bit of time here it won't take you real long and you'll have a in fact if you want to post some guesses as to what this might be we'll see if you guys are right um and i'm going to try to cartoon this a bit um they're really wild looking creatures and again, not a product of evolution, but uh, of the creation. And um, and then, of course, there's uh, there's aspects of these creatures that uh, are obviously um, something changed from the fall. So there's uh, I mean, everything's changed because of the fall, but some things are a little bit more 
obvious in that way, I guess. So this is a snapping turtle. And a while back I was asking my wife, what, what other animals should I feature on my, my YouTube and, and draw it and know it? And so she said one of them was a snapping turtle. So that's, uh, so that's good reason to, to draw it. Now this creature has wild detail on it. So I'm gonna try to go super fast and um, get in some of this detail. They're, they're very cool creatures. If you know anything about the snapping turtle, they've got a tongue that has like a little thing on the end of it and they go fishing and they're lightning fast. The reflexes on these things is just beyond blink of an eye. And uh, so the fish, the fish will come down to get this worm that it sees in the mouth of the, it doesn't know the snapping turtles there because it's so well kind of camouflaged. And when that fish goes to get that meal, it becomes a meal. So uh, really cool design. And if you look at the photos of these creatures, um, I, I think part of the reason why people like to think of these as prehistoric is because um, some of the odd looking creatures in this world tend to get a, a spin on them. Like they don't look nor like normal animals that we see all the time. And so either they look like aliens or they look prehistoric or there's always some kind of, you know, designation that way that uh, they're, they're like different than, and they're just, they're just earth animals. They, they live here like everything else. They're, they're not seen as commonly as, uh, as some animals. And so, and they've got all this like frilly detail and, weird looking structure to them sometimes. And, and a lot of times, uh, as if you've heard me talk on this before in the past, some of that, uh, that weirdness, because they're so uncommon looking and they've got frills and appendages and all kinds of cool looking stuff on them. Movie people love to make aliens based, aliens in movies based on these things. And so when we see the actual animal that was used as the reference, we say, hey, it looks like an alien. Well, <laughs> we got it backwards. No, that alien looks like a snapping turtle or that alien looks like, and they, look, there's all this like spiky little details on them. It's just so cool looking. You could spend a lot of time and I'm just sketching this thing out. Now that's just the front of it and it's got, um, all this, even the eyeball, it's got like this cool looking, I think it's part of the camouflage that God has built into the snapping turtle. Um, so the eyes won't be seen and then that would scare off the prey. It's almost got like a pig nose on the end of a little thing that sticks out there. I'm assuming that uh, when they, they need to take a breath, if they don't want to give away the position, they just stick that above the water, get a breath, and then come back down. And it's a very stealthy way to uh, to kind of do that. Now, um, if you know anything about snapping turtles, the smaller variety live around where I do in Kentucky. And even up north in Michigan and Wisconsin and Minnesota and places, there's all kinds of snapping turtles up there. And uh, they're, they're not uh, something friendly to have around. Uh, but um, if, you, if you do research on them and you look into the family of snapping turtles, there's, there's a, like a monster one called the alligator snapping turtle. And I, I was shocked when I found out that that particular one, actually you can find them way up into Kansas. And they, they tend to live in like riverbeds and mud. And, and I thought, man, this creature 
like in, it makes more sense like in Louisiana where it's swampy and stuff but you can find these things way up into Kansas which is weird and alligator snapping turtles I mean snapping turtles themselves are oh we've had some uh, some my my reference is covering up your comments and so I'm kind of going back here let's see uh, we have a guess let's see nautilus I guess that was way back when I was I was drawing it um, at the beginning so that's a that's a good guess let's see um, another guess or horseshoe crab you know, I was probably drawing a little more detail at that point let's see snapping turtle got it okay <laughs> and then um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I guess it's turning out a little more realistic. I guess if you look at the the, uh, the 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 reference I'm using, this is a bit distorted. But I'm so enamored with the. Uh, I'm trying to find my. Oh, here we go. Okay. There's so much cool detail in this that um, sometimes you kind of forget to go cartoony. So there's some cartoons too. If you look at different artists that do caricatures um, in particular that they've gone super realistic but it's distorted um, this the skin you can see the pores in the skin and so it's not a cartoon at all in the sense of you know like looking at uh, Bugs Bunny or something but um, so there's a form of cartooning that that is like super realistic but then distorted too so maybe if i finished if i were to finish this one and you know airbrush it and all kinds of stuff like that then i would probably go for something like that um, and you guys can't probably see this but my palette was getting in the way there it's got a little foot sticking out here with claws on it. I guess as far as showing construction, I haven't been real strong in that in this presentation. But I did, uh, you know, draw the general shape as I'm looking at it, and then I'm quickly roughing in detail. That's as you get more practiced as an artist, you feel more comfortable doing stuff like that. Where if you're just beginning. Um, Probably want to take a little more care and get that those use those rough guideline type of things to uh, to get that stuff put in there. Now, if this particular photo doesn't show a tail, but alligator snapping turtle or uh, snapping turtles in general have the coolest tails, and so if this tail was being shown. It would probably you know go around like that and they're thick and long and they've got like this thing on the back of them now my uh, my daughter and the daughter of a friend of ours um, I over the years I've taken them down to the river here and we've gone looking for minnows and salamanders and all kinds of stuff have like a little river exploration time and uh, one year we found a snapping turtle. And so I, I went over and I picked it up because I've seen a lot of people in videos and stuff and they, they pick them up by the tail. And um, that was a mistake. I've, I heard something go like that. And I think some, a bone dislocated or something like that in the snapping turtle. It wasn't a huge snapping turtle, but it was big enough. And um, so I went afterwards. I went and looked it up, and I thought, "Oh, that's not a good thing to do." So don't don't pick them up by the tails if you find them. But again, look at all this rich detail. That um, they're they're kind of monster looking creatures, but super super cool. And again, as far as like being a, a living fossil. Uh, I guess a living fossil part of the definition is that you find these creatures in the fossil record and then you compare the the animal that we currently have on this earth to the one that was in the fossil and there's not much if any evolution has happened you know 
uh, from a creationist point of view, we go, well, yeah, that's what we expect. But even if there was some some differences, uh, that's just natural selection. That's just the variety that uh, God created in the in the kind. And so you do see different different species that have different uh, varieties within their family. And uh, so that's that's nothing big. It's just that you don't see one animal turning into another one. And there was another animal I was thinking about drawing today. Maybe I will at some point. Um, there's the mud skippers are super cool animals too. And uh, and so they use their their fins as legs to kind of walk around and, and hop around and stuff. And but the difference is those are fins. They're not legs, and they're not fins on the way to being legs. They're fins that are used as legs. You know, like uh, if you've seen penguins swim underwater, they fly. They have like their their little wings are like flippers. And so I guess you someone would say, well, they're on the way to being fish because they use their wings as flippers. No, they're just something that's used for something else too. I mean, humans use, we use our arms and legs for, you know, crawling and, and, and we swim with them too, but I'm not on the way to being a fish. So I think something can have a, a different use, but still not be the the other appendage that you're you're trying to credit it with being. It's not on the way. Um, so, but when you have evolutionary glasses on, that's the type of thing you're always looking for. Is uh, so that's that's just super fun to uh, to sketch in. Um. And if I had time again, I'd I'd ink this puppy up and uh, and uh, give it in coloring it and and so maybe one of these times I'll I'll bring it this far in my video and then the next week I'll render on it and bring something to completion if that would be something that you guys would like. Um, let's see. Paul says. I've seen a few snapping turtles in the wild here in Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, they're all over the place, and um, there there's videos online. I haven't seen it for a while, but when we moved to Kentucky it, around that time, there was a guy called the 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 Turtle Man, and he was real famous for jumping into ponds and just pulling up all these snapping turtles. These are the smaller snapping turtles that we have around here, and uh, just a crazy guy. I would be afraid of getting my fingers, you know, chomped off. All right, so there's our snapping turtle. Um, it's called a living fossil, but it it is as it is. I mean, I mean, it's it's probably changed a little bit through time because animals do change, um, but it's it's not evolving. It, it's the the bottom line is that God created the original turtle, whatever the original turtle was, and that original turtle had a, an amount of information in it. And so the species of turtles that we've seen now are products of that original information being expressed in different ways in different animals. <clears throat> so, all right, we're going to move on to um, animal number two. And uh, as much as I like snapping turtles and as much as they kind of creep me out at the same time, I'm scared of the, the, the lightning quickness of the mouth. That, that's the part that gets me. Otherwise, I love them. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me get, take a drink here. This next animal I heard about when I was a little kid, and so I have a, a certain affection for it, um, although it's been used to teach a lot of kids <clears throat> Excuse me, about millions of years and, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to start drawing it, and I want you guys to start guessing what this creature is as well. And I want to see if I can put my comments over to the side here so I can actually see them. <clears throat> I've got my reference and your comments on one screen here. So I almost need three to do this really well when I'm drawing. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. All right. Um, there we go. I want to draw this one a little darker 
blue than I did in the other one, just to make it easier for you guys to see. I like to sketch in blue for some reason. Um, this shape might look a little less obvious right away, so you're going to have to stick with it. Um, the basic shape on this one, I'm trying to, to get this. So if you're taking any notes on how to draw, again, I'm trying to get the basic shape for this guy down. Something I can, I can build upon. <clears throat> And then his the leg comes out right there. Anybody have any ideas what this is? Oh, well, sometime I should finish one. Okay, well maybe uh, maybe I'll do that for um, for next week. Um, next week I'm actually not gonna probably not gonna be able to do this live, so I might pre-record something. So maybe I'll just go ahead and finish uh, one of these two drawings for next week. So guidelines are very handy to uh, to help. One other thing that's a bit tormenting with creatures like this is that there's so much detail on them that uh, when I'm just drawing by myself, I like to take my time and and kind of uh, and, and there's an advantage sometimes to going fast, but um, you can kind of enjoy and soak in all the detail when you when you go slow anybody have any idea what this animal is it's got kind of a funny name and it's uh it's got a certain status too as far as uh animals and dinosaurs so there's a little hint it's not a not a gecko and uh, let's see, we've got another, we've got a guess here that says iguana. So no, that's not an iguana. And then uh, thank you guys for weighing in. Bonnie said, uh, oops, yeah, gecko. But those are, those are really good guesses. Um, I don't, I don't think those animals have uh, quite the connection to dinosaurs that this one does. And um, I'm kind of surprised, though, in a sense, that this one has the connection to dinosaurs that it does, because dinosaurs are defined as as uh, animals that have their legs underneath them, and you know, some animals have uh, they look like they're doing a push up. Their legs go out to the side, and those technically technically aren't dinosaurs. And I think this guy kind of is more like that. So that's that's kind of a question that I have. Um, the first letter of this particular creature comes from more towards the uh, back end of the the alphabet. So let's put it that way. And he's got um, some little frill type things on him. He's got some detail that goes to the side, down the side like that. And I'll give you another hint. You can't find this particular creature in the hemisphere that I live in. So this, this animal, I have to go a long way away to find this guy or gal. Now, it's got the coolest shaped head. 
And one reference that I have has the, the mouth open. Sea-based iguana, no. Monitor lizard, no. Komodo dragon, no. <laughs> Good guesses, excellent guesses. This is, uh, like I said, a live, well, actually, I think the Komodo dragon was listed on that video that I saw earlier as a, as a living, living fossil. So that, that one, um, was a, was a possibility, but, uh, I believe this, this, uh, this reptile is a bit smaller, not quite the size of, uh, of say an iguana or a monitor lizard. Monitor lizards tend to be very large. Um, not all of them are, but Ugh, I don't think this one's turned. I'm, I'm not doing this guy justice, put it that way. Probably have to sketch on him some more to kind of correct the, the shape. In fact, part of the problem is that I think I put the eye too far back. Here, let me uh, scooch that up a little bit more. Artists, eraser, or erasers are artists' friends. But this, uh, this top ridge here, or the edge, goes up. I love the lizard, like, eye brow things that, yeah, that's a little bit better. This, uh, this, oh, we've got a, we've got a winner. <laughs> All right, that one deserves to go up on the screen here. Paul got it right. It's the Tuatara. So thank you, Paul. Bing, bing, bing. We have a winner. <laughs> so my Tuatara is kind of... It's, it's kind of one of those, the live... It is a bit trickier to draw than the other. The, the, the turtle was easier. Um... Boy, I'm gonna have to go by and back and do some plastic surgery on this guy. But they're they're so full of uh, rich detail. It's just fun to draw. Um, and again, they're they're you know say millions of years. You always hear that with the Tuatara, and they always hear about the age of the dinosaurs, and so they they kind of try to make it uh, a real. That the long ages type of thing. Um, and so that, that triggers in your mind when you see one of these two Ataris, you go, oh yeah, the age of the dinosaurs. And But that's that's just a fiction, that's just a, a belief system that's, and it's not consistent with scripture. So when you see these animals that they call fo living fossils, uh, think, yeah, it's because it's not that old. It's it's cool that we still have them around, but um, it's it's not a as big a miracle. Not that not that uh, people that tend to be evolutionists like to use the word miracle, but uh, it, a creationist isn't isn't shocked at all. In fact, if we did find a dinosaur living on Earth today, that wouldn't be something shocking to a creationist, a young Earth creationist, because the earth isn't that old. In fact, um, fresh dinosaur f flesh has been found in, in fossils, unfossilized dinosaur blood vessels and, and such have been found in, in uh, different fossils. And evolutionists well know this now. It was an evolutionist that discovered that. So they're actually actively breaking open some fossils that they wouldn't do that to now to find the blood vessels and other other tissues inside dinosaur fossils but they're they're scratching their heads trying to think how in the world did this thing last millions of years without fossilizing or rotting or you know whatever it is so it's fun to watch that but it's sad at the same time because they will not touch the age issue they have to have age long ages Basically, because age replaces God, age is their God. Um, 
as, as a Bible believing Christian, people say, well, how did everything come to be? Well, it's the product of a creator God. And for people that don't believe in a creator God, you know, you got to rationalize, well, how does that, how did everything come to be? Well, it just happened over a long period of time to say that everything happened in a short period of time that points to God because, you know, nothing's going to just pop into existence unless uh, somebody spoke it into existence. So, uh, but when they're looking at fossils and animals and things like that, they always, people that, uh, now there's theistic evolutionists too, so that kind of muddies the water a bit, but, um, particularly those that don't want to believe that there's a God have to have the time. And so when they look at evidence that, that screams, I'm, I'm uh, anthropomorphizing the, uh, the evidence because evidence needs to be interpreted and interpreted. Um, but it, it, it's puzzling to them when they see something that, that shouldn't be here that uh, they would have never guessed would have been here. In fact, it was an accident that that, that original dinosaur flesh was found. Um, well, I'll give myself uh, probably a C on that one. <laughs> I uh, want to stop on that one. I think I'll probably finish the, the snapping turtle for next week's video. So, um, so we'll go back to him and I'll, I'll ink him and, and color him for, uh, for next week's video. But again, I hope you enjoyed watching me sketch and just kind of chat about living fossils. Um, again, finding animals like this that are also in the fossil record are, are no big mystery to creationists. Um, and it's, it's, it's fun, but sad to watch too, when evolutionists kind of scratch their heads. But as the Bible says, when we, when we um, leave God out of the picture, when we don't want to listen to his word, that's uh, suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. And, um, and so it, it's really sad to, to watch people doing that and just pray for your friends and family, especially that, that uh, might be caught in that, that trap of trying to figure things out apart from God's word. We need God in all aspects of life, and when it comes to the past especially, uh, to depend on what he says, what he's revealed to us. We don't have to do a lot of hard work, in a sense. The foundation for understanding things has all been given to us. We just have to look at it and read it and, and believe it. So, But uh, check out more of our resources on the Reasons for Hope YouTube channel, and we're also on Facebook and, and our website, r4h.com, so r then F-O-R-H.com. And if you haven't downloaded our app yet, I would highly recommend that. Go to uh, whatever store your, your device uses. Let's see, Roku, uh, Google. Um, I can't remember the stores now. Android and Apple. I, I think that's roughly about it. And go there and search in for Reasons for Hope and then download the app that has the little asterisks on it, the blue asterisks. And then you'll get access to all kinds of Reasons for Hope materials for free, completely free. And you'll have a treasure trove of witnessing materials and materials that encourage you and your Christian faith. So, all right, this has been Dan Letha for Reasons for Hope. And I thank you so for all you guys that uh, that weighed in. I'm, it just encourages me to see these comments and for people watching me live. So pray for me as I'm at Bible camp next week and uh, watch for my video. I'll, I'll, I'll finish one today and then you'll be able to see the, the end result for next week's, uh, next week's cartooning program. So thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend. Bye.